Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to some of you and peace to the rest of you It's black heart sign of black in again And more important than you hitting that uh, Like or subscribe button is that you Hit the share button or that you simply spread the message to someone That uh, you know might benefit from it Because the message is more important than the messenger Listen here, black folk. I understand that Chris Brown says some things that got people upset. And uh, we have every right to be upset. Because at the end of the day, how dare anybody support white supremacy, right? If Chris Brown, and I haven't read the quotes, nor have I seen a video, to be honest, so. I'm gonna take sisters and brothers word for what he said, but if he said what he said and he meant what we take he meant, if he said that he prefers women with nice hair and he meant non kinky when he said nice, and you know what? That was some foul stuff he said. That was low down. It was pro oppressor, anti victim. Siding with the oppressor against the victim is just not, I can't deal with that. I don't care what color someone is when they do it. Although, when black folks do it, it's Stockholm Syndrome. But I still can't just overlook it. It's not okay. And I'm going to go ahead and clear something up before anybody tries to dig this up and use it against me later. Um, when I married a woman in North Africa, she was black, but she had straight hair. I saw her hair before we married because you're allowed to Islamically. I wasn't sure if she'd merely permed it or if her hair was semi-straight or what. But the thing was that I liked who she was. More important than her hair, I liked her face. Later, I found her body was banging too. So I wasn't going to hold the hair against her, even though I wasn't, I didn't prefer um, straight hair. And I agreed recently to marry a lady from another part of Africa, non-Saharan Africa. She's unmistakably a black woman. After we agreed, I saw her hair briefly twice. It's not kinky. I didn't know that though. When I first agreed, I assumed that her hair was going to be kinky, but it's not. Hopefully, um, I'll scrap that. But anyway, the point is, I never went looking for that, but that's what wound up happening twice. As a pretty pale black man who had straight hair himself a while back, years ago I know some sisters are saying well how dare Blackheart have the nerve to complain because these ladies hair wasn't kinky but in actuality this time I did not complain it wasn't even a minus it wasn't even something I looked at and said well she has something that makes up for it it wasn't even that I was completely neutral about the hair if it's clean it smells good I'm neutral about it um, I mention this because you see, when you're dealing with Edo sisters that are vocal, not all of them, of course, but when you're dealing with the ones that are vocal, you're going to be dealing with a group that, um, that is not satisfied. <laughs> so everything is a lose-lose situation. You got Edo sisters that ain't even vocal about this. They listen, they learn, but they're living their lives. And if they do have something to say, they try to say something positive uh, and fair and unbalanced. <laughs> but... A lot of the ones that got some stuff to say, like the sisterhood of failure, no, they, they got something bad to say no matter what. And so if they know that I agreed twice to marry women whose hair was not kinky, they would hold that against me. But if they also knew that I married a lady from the U.S., an Edo sister, and her hair uh, was, it, they would not count it in favor of me, but they would still count that against me as well. 
this being said, um, now that we got that out the way, my actual stance on it is that I have nothing against the way a black woman's hair grows out of her scalp naturally. And there are some black women who have straight hair or non-kinky hair. And there are, uh, are women who have something in between. And there are some women whose hair texture changes with the weather. I got nothing against any of them. <laughs> At all. But Chris, when he said what he said, even though he was merely stating it as his own personal preference, he in a sense was stating just a personal preference. He didn't, from what I understand, tell other brothers that they should go for that too. He didn't tell other brothers not to go for anything. I didn't hear any reactions from sisters that factored this in. Many sisters had no reaction, but for the ones who did react did not factor this in. And I take issue with that. Why did you not factor in that he did not tell anyone else? Because you see, if sisters, let's take Rihanna as a good example of this. Rihanna's actually dating a man who ain't got a kink in his hair. He is a non-black Arab or an Arab that no one knows is black and even including he himself. She dating him. She's dating this dude who is not known to be black unless you go dig through his family history, which you probably can't. And as she's dating this dude, ain't nobody going in on her. But see, she and Chris Brown used to date. Now, what does this mean? Chris Brown is evidence that she doesn't hate black men. Okay, fair enough. Rihanna's evidence that Chris Brown does not hate black women with kinky hair because we all saw her childhood picture where she got that bush and it was beady and nappy. And if she ran a comb from the back to the front, she could shoot somebody with a comb. And I'm saying this is a compliment to those naps and beads on her hair. But I'm going to defend sisters in my personal, physical, real life because I live in a non-black nation overall that has a lot of black people in it. And usually when the subject of black women comes up, these dudes here don't express any kind of hatred at all. They just can't see black women as being equal to non-black women in terms of, even in terms of beauty and attraction. And I say to these dudes, you're an effing idiot. Black women can look all kinds of ways. <laughs> you're limited in your appearance. Black women are not. That's what it comes down to. But I don't, I don't respect their views because they sound a lot like Chris Brown to a certain extent, but they're siding with the oppressor over the victim. And that's why I'm not with Chris Brown when he said it. But I want sisters to start thinking logically, and I want sisters to react non-egotistically, but rather morally. That's what I want to see. I will say this. <laughs> on one hand, sisters will sit up here and they will turn down a brother because his hair is straight. I know they'll do it because that's what happened in my case. I didn't know what was going on. I wasn't fully aware of what was happening till 2001, like I said. But they'll do it. There is a consistency to black women having this. <laughs> but let me tell you something else I've already mentioned before, but it undermines, what a, lot of, uh, it undermines a lot of sisters' rage and what he said. He said that he prefers a woman with nice hair, and we assume that he means non-kinky, unless he actually said that in the quote, I'm not sure. <laughs> but he dated Rihanna. He ain't, you know, he ain't only dated women with straight hair. But I'm gonna tell you this, sisters, as much as many of you at least do consistently prefer chocolate brothers with the beady nappy hair or bald head, openly, publicly in front of other people, Privately speaking, some of you do and some of you don't. Some of you don't care about a man's head texture. And some of you prefer that a man have straight hair and pale skin. And I know this because shortly before I had, ex had it explained to me what was going on. And then shortly after I had it explained to me what was going on in 2001. I had women in relationships 
and marriages trying to get at me. I didn't, and they were attractive. I didn't have single attractive women trying to get at me. I don't know what it was, but I had women that were attractive and involved, committed somehow to someone else (laughs) trying to get at me. They didn't mind. And the reason for that was that they had the perfect reason to keep it a secret. This was how I knew. At that point, I realized that when it was explained to me what was going on, I realized that black women did not actually have the preference for the chocolate brothers that I was told they kind of had a preference for, that I expected them to have a preference for. They had the preference to be seen with a chocolate brother Privately, they could have liked a chocolate or a vanilla brother. They could have liked the kinky naps or the straight hair, anything in between. The women's preferences were different, in other words. But publicly, they had to be on code, and they were. I get at to sisters. Publicly, sisters were on code. That's real. But sisters, you cannot sit up here and say a damn thing about what Chris Brown said if you ain't got a damn thing to say about Serena Williams because Serena Williams actually proved through marriage that she considers an outright white guy with no black blood and less money than her to be superior to a black man. Talking about some he treats me better. Well, I mean, of course, you screwed him and you wouldn't get a brother's nut. I guess he does treat you better. Now, granted, in all honesty. She gave it up to that white dude early because she was afraid to lose him. She ain't getting brothers nothing because she wasn't afraid to lose him no matter how much money they had. That's Hollywood for you. A lot of you sisters would say, yeah, but that's Serena. That's not all black women. And, and I believe it. That's, that actually, a lot of times it might be true. <laughs> but you see, that's Hollywood. And many of you have said, yeah, but Serena's Hollywood. Meghan Merkel's Hollywood. You can't use them marrying white guys as evidence of anything. And, I'm, and I have said it's not them marrying by themselves. It is the reaction of sisters that shows me that there's a change in trend. The light-skinned brother, he ain't good enough to be seen out in public with, let alone marry. But the white man, he is. Why? Because not only did these women marry them, but other sisters supported it and had nothing to say about it. <laughs> Except you go, girl. Are you effing kidding me? Now, I'm going to say something else too because a lot of you are listening right now when you're saying, okay, Blackheart's got a complex because he was pale and his hair was straight. And so therefore, you know, sisters didn't uh, treat him well or... Um, or they probably didn't like him because he had the complex. Let's talk about the complex, actually. <laughs> Sisters have said, before Chris Brown and after Chris Brown, and brothers wonder why we have the complexes about our hair and skin that we have. Sisters have said this. They said it in response to Lil' Kim getting bleached out and getting surgery. And they said it in response to uh, a black woman going to South Africa to get her eye color permanently changed. They said brothers gave black women these complexes. That's what they said. When these sisters have said this, they're saying that brothers can give them a complex. Which implies, again, that brothers have some control over women's insecurities. (laughs) If black men said something like this, they would be called all kind of weak bitch motherfuckers and uh, all kind of insecure little bitches by women. They would be called these names. I know that this is the case because when I simply talk about sisters' preferences and how brothers have have to live with these preferences, sisters listen to me saying that they got certain preferences and that we brothers have to adapt, and they say, Blackheart's got a complex. Simply because I'm aware of their preferences and what it means for brothers. My mere awareness of their preferences, they turn around and call a complex. They do it to other brothers too. (laughs) Am I supposed to have 
sympathy in that case? No. So what I'm telling you, sisters, is this. In my personal life, I'm going to defend you. In my real day-to-day, face-to-face life, I will continue to defend you because you don't know who the hell I am. But in front of black people here on YouTube and on Black Junction TV and on Black Avenger TV when I get that account started, I'm not going to defend you as a whole. Except in a few cases, I'm not going to. And this is one of those cases where I will admit that Chris Brown shouldn't have said it to a certain extent, but I'm not going to defend you still because your reaction to it is egotistical and not a moral outrage. You're not morally outraged about it. You're egotistically outraged. That's not defensible because you don't tolerate it when black men react simply from an ego. You don't tolerate a black man's outright moral righteous outrage and indignation if you think it's purely egotistical. So I'm not going to turn around and defend you or defend your ego. Your moral rights, those are worth defending. Your ego is not because your ego is a fucking problem. May God forgive me for swearing. But that's what your ego is. You need to have your egos crushed to a certain extent. There are things that as a majority, as a collective, you are trying to justify that are not justifiable. And the minority of you are sick of the majority of you doing this. So for your insecurities that you blame on black men about your hair and your skin color, you still need your egos crushed, but not about your skin or your hair or their colors or their textures. You don't need your egos crushed about those things, but most brothers would never even try to do it. Why do I say that your reaction is egotistical instead of moral? Well, number one, weaves and wigs still sell. Skin bleach does not sell quite as much as it does in, let's say, Jamaica or in the continent, but it does sell too much. A box of skin bleach being sold is too goddamn much. It still sells. That's how I know. The other reason I know that this is an egotistical thing is because Chris Brown said it and it gets a different reaction because Chris Brown is famous and has money and that's really what the walk you care about. A rich and famous man said this and that's why you don't like it. That's why you're bothered by it. I'm telling you now, we ain't got to tolerate that. The other thing, too, something else that uh, shows that you're, this is an egotistical reaction. When you have preferences and they're unrealistic, you don't care. It doesn't make a bit of difference to you. When another sister has preferences that are unrealistic, it does make a bit of difference to you. Rachel Lynn, I'm sorry, Rebecca Lynn Pope, if I got her name right, Rebecca Lynn Pope, she had to be a professional matchmaker to get disgusted with your preferences. They were preferences. But your preferences were actual standards that precluded most men and kept a lot of you single and, uh, and turned others of you into baby mamas in what you call alpha widows, alpha seed widows, alpha breed widows, then trying to go to these guys that you consider to be second and third rate, inferior, and get them to be stepdads and then get mad when they wouldn't do it. No, you're bringing these kids in tow, other men's kids, and you're telling men for whom you would have never had kids previously to play stepdad. And they know that you know that you would have never had their own kids previously. And you want them to play stepdad. And what they see is you're insulting their very DNA. And then they want to play stepdad. And you just good for a pump and dump. You just good for quick sex sex to some of them and not even to others. And you're mad about that. But you see these guys is good for nothing but resources. But you don't want them to be mad about that. That's a damn shame. Still... The standards and the preferences that sisters have when they're not realistic are not being challenged by the majority of women. But with men, he said merely a preference that he has shown is not a necessity at all. And y'all upset about it. I'm upset because white supremacy is evil. And he should not have said anything that could sound like he's backing it up. 
He's an African man with some naps on his own damn head, and he got the nerve to say this white supremacist BS. But that ain't what y'all, you know, y'all ain't saying it for that reason. Y'all ain't saying it because you were against white supremacy. You're saying it because you don't like being put at the bottom of the SMV market. Or you don't like your SMV being put at the bottom. And I don't blame you for not liking it. You don't, you especially don't like it because of something that you just, you were born with. It comes naturally, genetically, and it's not a birth defect. I get it. Well, what the hell do you think brothers have been saying? You've been sitting up here telling normal black men who are not wimps and punks and cowards and bitches that you are paranoid that they might be wimps and punks and cowards and bitches and that they're not real men. And therefore, their only value is to raise other men's kids. And that's it. And you don't want these dudes to have anything to say about it. That's what you're saying. Regular, normal, run-of-the-mill men getting insulted, told that they're not, shown actually that they're not good enough. After being told at a young age that, that they're good enough, they get shown that they're not good enough. And then they're later asked to pay the bills for all of the results of the, the mating selection that you did choose. And you're upset with them. You want to call them bitter uh, beta males. And they weren't even, I mean, beta's not even the same as an omega. We use beta the way that the scientists who, who, can't, who coined the terms alpha and beta actually meant omega. See, he was talking about wolves when he said alpha and beta. And he said omega. The omega wolf is the male that actually is picked on by all the others. He hunts last. He's the lowest in rank. Betas might be given permission to have sex sometimes. They might be, but the, the omega's not. That's real. That's real and true. That's actually what goes on among wolves. And you're using the term beta in the wrong way, talking about the omegas, and you're telling regular normal men who might be considered beta that you're afraid that they're actually omegas. But you don't know the proper terminology to express it. And when these, let's say if they're actually betas anyway, when these betas, which actually means second in command, these normal run-of-the-mill guys don't like being compared to the omegas because they're not, you get upset and you say, no, you're, an, you're a beta, but you really mean omega. So just deal with it. Play with the cards you were given. Women don't want you until they got kids. Well, that's just how it is. You don't want to accept that actually it means something's wrong with your mate selection standards because you're not only choosing what is very rare, which means you have to share it, you're insisting that other men accept the double insult of paying the price for it. You're insisting on that. But then when Chris Brown doesn't have the ability to think critically and he says it's white supremacy BS, it's not convenient to you and then you want to trip. No. And that's why we got these complexes. Nope. Complex is something that affects your self-esteem, usually. And like Cat Williams said, Cat Williams said it best, bitch, that's why they call it self-esteem. If men's awareness of some standards you may have or preference you may have that doesn't uh, benefit him constitutes having a complex simply because he knows your preferences, then what the F is it when you actually admit to having low self-esteem about something? <laughs> Man, that sounds worse than a complex to me. That sounds like an outright insanity. And as we all know, insane people are usually locked up and prevented from reproducing. They are deemed the ultimate sexual inferiors. So my question is, why haven't men looked at most of you with these insecurities and complexes and deemed you as exactly what the hell you are, a sexual inferior? The day that men start doing this, I look forward to that because that's the day that a lot of you will grow up. You're not going to actually be locked up as the, in, uh, as the uh, insane people you are. Most of you will actually start becoming sane because you don't want to be celibate for your whole lives any more than guys do. 
that's real I hope I hope that what I've said has been a benefit if you know someone that'll benefit from this spread it to them Blackheart signing black out again Assalamu alaikum